gas is going back up, the holidays are right around the corner, and it's time to replace all the Halloween candy you've eaten in the last couple of weeks so that you actually have some to give out on Halloween. All of that adds up to one thing. Our comic budget is pretty tight right now, so let's take a look at 10 comics you can pick up on just a $20 budget. Welcome to October. Scary movies, cooler temperatures, football, and comic books. I'm a big fan of all of those things, and just for fun, I decided to throw in a few seasonally appropriate picks for this list. If you're new to the channel, every quarter I put out a series of new top 10 lists featuring books for a 20, 50, and $100 budget, and then I cap it all off with a comics to invest in video, which features 10 books I think are worth checking out in the current market. Today we're focusing on the $20 price point, so let's get to the books. We're getting straight into the holiday spirit to start off the list. Stalking the number 10 spot is Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday, number one. Published by Topps in July of 1993, Jason Goes to Hell number one is the first official appearance of Friday the 13th's very own Jason Voorhees. Though it's kind of a bit of a shared accolade as another Topps issue, Satan 6 number four, was released simultaneously with Jason Goes to Hell number one. It's hard to think of a more 90s book. You have Jason featured here in the adaptation of his ninth film in a book that has a glow in the dark cover was packaged with three trading cards and then was sealed in a poly bag. I tell you, if this thing would have come with a set of pogs and had just a touch of chrome on the cover, it might have literally transported you back to 1993 or at a minimum compelled you to dust off that old flannel shirt that's been chilling in the back of your closet for the last few years. The creative team was composed of writer Andy Mangles and artist Cynthia Martin. This one is not for younger readers. Not that I think I should have to say that, but better safe than sorry. You can currently pick up a copy of this book for just under $20. Just be sure to steer clear of Camp Crystal Lake. Gabrielle Del Otto is one of the premier cover artists of the last 15 years. In 2011, the artist did a series of covers for a mini series titled Vengeance, which features a variety of Marvel's greatest villains. While the series is best well known for hosting the first appearance of America Chavez in issue number one, our number nine book, Vengeance number two, is a bit of a sleeper issue at the moment. Published in October 2011, there are a couple of reasons to track this issue down. With America Chavez's second appearance taking place in the Joe Casey story titled World on Fire, which was drawn by Nick Dragota, this is a great example of an undervalued second appearance. Vengeance number one is a 250 plus dollar book right now, while a copy of Vengeance number two can be bought for a fraction of that, just 20 bucks. Chavez aside, the Del Otto cover spotlighting Daredevil villain Bullseye is a must have. To be honest with you, I would recommend this whole series just on the cover art alone. With Daredevil Born Again on the Disney Plus slate, it's only a matter of time before Bullseye finds his way into the MCU, and this is one of the best modern Bullseye covers there is, in my opinion. It was recently announced that Keanu Reeves was going to reprise the role of John Constantine for a sequel to the 2005 Constantine film. So what better time than now to include an affordable Constantine book in one of our lists? Haunting the number eight spot is Hellblazer number 41. Published in May 1991, Hellblazer 41 is the U.S. debut of writer Garth Ennis. That's a name you might recognize if you're a fan of The Boys or Preacher. Wasting no time with the plot, Ennis's first outing with Constantine reveals that John has been diagnosed with lung cancer. The cover for this issue was painted by Tom Canty, while Will Simpson handled the interior pencils. I can see the 300-issue Hellblazer run somewhat mirroring what happened with Sandman over the last few years. As the new movie project gets closer, more and more books may gain interest in the market and start to climb in price. As of right now, you can still pick up most issues of Hellblazer for a fairly reasonable price, and you can get this noteworthy issue for just $20 right now. Have you ever flipped past a book in a discount bin so many times that you kind of started to feel bad for it? And eventually, maybe in a moment of weakness, you brought a copy home with you one day? Yeah, that never happened to me either. But if I would have done that, our number seven book probably would have been a leading contender. Coming in at the number seven spot is Alpha Flight number one. 
Published in August 1983, Alpha Flight 1 is probably one of the most readily available number ones of the 1980s. But despite that, it slowly started to climb its way out of the comic book purgatory we call the dollar bins. A John Byrne special, which means he wrote the story and drew all of the art, Alpha Flight 1 is a really low-risk spec book that is loaded down with first appearances. Debuting in this issue are Puck, Marina, Tundra, Madison Jeffries, Gamma Flight, and it also features a cameo of Wild Child. That's not bad for a $20 book. There have been rumors floating around for a while now that Alpha Flight may make their way into the MCU, which can probably be said for just about every Marvel character that's not already in the MCU, but let's not worry about that right now. I grew up on Batman the Animated Series, and because of the show, I became a big fan of Batman's rogues gallery. Unfortunately, there are very few instances where the average comic collector can easily afford the first appearance of one of these prolific villains. But our number six book is one of those rare affordable examples, Detective Comics 583. One of the more unique villains in the rogues gallery, the Ventriloquist and Scarface make their first appearance here in Tech 583. Published in February 1988, Detective 583 has a Mike Magnola cover, John Wagner script, and Norm Brayfogle interior art. Does it really get any better than Scarface and Ventriloquist? A dummy with a Tommy gun? I mean, come on. That's amazing stuff. This book had heated up for a bit, back in the beginning of the pandemic, but it's settled back down and is selling around the $20 mark once again, making it a good value compared to recent years. The big news coming out of last week was Hugh Jackman will be suiting up once again as Wolverine for the forthcoming Deadpool 3. After a period of cooling prices on Wolverine books, including Incredible Hulk 181, the market has come to its senses and is starting to lean into Wolverine once again. Our number five book comes from one of the best Wolverine stories ever told, Weapon X. Sitting in the number five position is Marvel Comics Presents number 79. Despite being around for more than 15 years at this point, Wolverine lacked any sort of an origin story prior to Barry Windsor Smith's Weapon X story. The appeal of Marvel Comics Presents 79 is the full reveal of the Weapon X character design, which is prominently featured on the issue's cover. And while certain elements of the design had been used in previous issues, it was here in MCP 79 that the signature element of the costume design debuted, the Weapon X helmet. The story began in Marvel Comics 72 and ran through issue 84. The first chapter of the story is the most valuable of the run, but at a $20 price point, Marvel Comics Presents 79 is the runner up value wise. Conjuring its way to the number four spot is a book that inspired a Netflix show and brought America's favorite teenage witch to the dark side of Archie Comics. Chilling Adventures of Sabrina number one. Published in December 2014, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is set in the Archie horror universe that popular titles such as Afterlife with Archie and Jughead the Hunger are set in. The issue serves as a retelling of Sabrina's origin set in this new world. As you may have guessed, it's a bit darker than the Melissa Joan Hart-led ABC show written by Robert Aguirre Sacasa and drawn by Robert Hack. This issue sets up the series by introducing this universe's version of Madam Satan, an MLJ character that predates Archie Andrews himself, having originally appeared all the way back in Pep Comics 16, and reintroduces Sabrina's cousin Ambrose as a younger character compared to how he'd been historically portrayed up to that point. With a Haunted House vibe on the die-cut hack cover, you can pick up a copy of Chilling Adventures of Sabrina for just under our $20 budget. One of the rumors surrounding the MCU is that World War Hulk is coming. If you're like me, you're probably tired of hearing about it. But there is something new that's going on in She-Hulk. Hulk suddenly had to go off-world to take care of some business, and one of the leading theories regarding what he's been taking care of is he had to go back out in space because he has a kid somewhere out there. Enter our number three book, Scar, Son of Hulk, number one. Originally debuting in a What If one-shot published in December 2007, that version of Scar existed in an alternate reality. The 616 version of Scar's first appearance is here in Scar, Son of Hulk, number one. Published in August 2008, Scar 1's story was written by Greg Pak and has cover and interior art from Ron Garney. If your first reaction is to tap the brakes and be like, wait, Ragnarok was just a few years ago, 
How does Hulk have an adult kid? Well, actually that's comic book canon. Scar matured in a single year, and you thought the terrible twos were bad with a normal kid. Imagine having a two-year-old Hulkling to wrangle. Most of the issue is spent on Scar's origin story, and he appears as a kid from the majority of the book, but in that last panel, he makes an appearance as an adult. So if we apply the Hulk 180-181 formula to this, that comes out to we'll all still be arguing about if this is his real first appearance as an adult or just a cameo until at least sometime in 2070. Scar 1 can be picked up for $20 in the current market, but if there's any hint of the character officially coming to the MCU, I wouldn't be surprised to see this thing jump up in short order. The Todd Father himself just dropped some fresh news regarding the long-awaited new Spawn movie this week, which got me thinking, why does everybody chase Spawn number one? But so few people seem to pursue our number two book, Spawn number two. I mean, I kind of get it. Spawn number one is where we meet Spawn for the first time, Mil Bolgia makes his first appearance, along with a lot of the rest of Spawn's major supporting characters. But, I mean, let's talk about this. Yeah, Mel Bolgia is the big bad, the guy in charge, the puppet master, whatever. But there's another character that more directly impacts Spawn at a street level, and that's the Violator. Violator is Spawn's primary nemesis, and as a kid who came up on Spawn, I've always felt that Spawn 2, which is Violator's first appearance, was never really given the reverence that it deserved. Published in June 1992, Spawn 2 was written and drawn by Todd McFarlane for the newly launched Image Comics line. Like all early Image books, copies of these issues are readily available, but if you're looking for a challenge, seek out a newsstand copy of Spawn number two. It's naturally more valuable, similar to the newsstand versions of Spawn 1. Currently selling for $15 to $20 for high-grade raw copies of the Direct Edition, Spawn 2 is an easy book to track down, and it will nicely complement that Spawn number one that's likely already in your collection. By the time you see this video, there will be a new Hellraiser movie released on Hulu. And while this series may not be for everyone, Pinhead is one of the most iconic horror characters in modern cinema. In a surprising move, Marvel greenlit a Hellraiser series back in 1989 based upon the Hellpriest and the Cenobites under their epic comics imprint. Topping our top 10 comics for a $20 budget for the fall of 2022 is Clive Barker's Hellraiser number one. Pinhead is featured on the cover of this issue, but readers might be a little disappointed to find out that the character does not appear inside any of the stories in this issue. That's right, Hellraiser number one is an anthology book that contains four separate stories. There was a pinhead pinup that hopefully held some people over till the second issue, which is when the character was introduced in the story. Hellraiser is a graphic and often brutal sandbox, and Barker is well known for his broken and most of the time irredeemable characters, but the series has firmly established itself in the horror community, and where fandoms cross over, there tends to be value. A copy of Hellraiser number one can be picked up for just $20 right now, but that's a much more affordable price than what you'll pay if you start playing around with the Lament configuration. Horror comics are not just for pre-code collectors. There's a great subset of the community that collects modern horror titles, and I hope that you've enjoyed our seasonally appropriate journey into that corner of the hobby. With recent fluctuations in the market, there are so many great buying opportunities out there right now. Even at the $10 to $20 budget range, I know that comic book dollars may be fewer and further between, but with a little luck and some patience, I have no doubt that you'll be able to continue to add to your collection, even in these interesting times we're living in. Happy hunting out there, and don't forget to collect responsibly. I'll see you in the next video.